If you have plants, you're going to have bugs. It's a fact of life for any grower. What to do about those bugs is not always simple or straightforward. A truly integrated pest management program focuses on prevention, monitoring, and control. In this article, we're going to focus simply on control through the use of a few of our favorite beneficial insects. Number one, though predator bugs are great at control, they will not correct infestations. Beneficial insects need to be used before a large outbreak occurs because they are good at controlling low numbers and keeping plants clean. We have not found them to be effective against large infestations. Number two, beneficial insects need to be applied on a rotation. This could be every week or two, all depending on the recommended release rate, your current insect population, your crop, and the time of year. It is not a set it and forget it kind of program. Number three, in our experience, there is no treatment, whether chemical or biological, that will guarantee 100% clean plants all season long. Any grower is likely to have outbreaks at some point that require a more aggressive approach. If you do need to spray, be sure to spray something that is friendly to beneficials. That way, new predators can be released quickly to help keep numbers low and break the pest life cycle. Trichogramma brassicae is a wasp that has done well in preliminary testing for caterpillar control and corn earworm control. While this is our first season getting a good jump on having these predators out early, we feel very confident that this will be our go-to beneficial insect. Female wasps lay eggs inside the host egg, and over 50 wasps can emerge from one egg. They can be used both indoors or in crop productions. Ideally, T. brassicae prefer temperatures between 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and will not survive below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They like a 60% relative humidity and have more longevity at 14 hours. Aureus and Sidiosis are true generalists and feed on all life stages of thrips, aphids, whitefly, scale, and both two-spotted and russet mites. They are good on both ornamentals and hemp and have been our best biological control for thrips. They kill more than 40 thrips a day, but will hunt many other pests based on what food is available. Neoceilus californicus is somewhat of a generalist, but prefers to eat mites. We found it especially effective in hemp crops to deal with two spotted spider mites, russet mites, broad mites, and thrips. N. californicus are a little more tolerable of lower temperatures. Anywhere from 50 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit keeps them active, but still require 16 hours of sunlight. Although they thrive in higher humidity, they can tolerate down to 40%. They only eat around 5 mites per day, so they survive longer in low population densities. Steiner Nema feltii are microscopic roundworms which live in the soil and feed on larvae and pupae. S. feltii are used largely for shore flies, but these beneficial nematodes will eat about anything in the soil. Fungus gnats, thrips, root aphids, caterpillars, etc. They represent a good base preventative, but they will need to be paired with other predators to have a fully rounded, integrative pest management program. S. feltii, like most nematodes, thrive in a soil temperature of 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. While they thrive in moist soil, be careful not to soak the growing media after application, or you might wash the nematodes right out of the pot. Phytocellus persimilis wins the award for our favorite predator. It attacks two spotted spider mites at all life stages and feeds on young thrips as well. These guys are so ferocious that they will turn cannibalistic when the pest population drops too low. P. persimilis eat 5 to 20 eggs or mites a day and reproduce faster than the mite population can. They perform best in warmer environments, 82 degrees Fahrenheit or above, and at least 70% humidity with 16 hours of daylight. When used outdoors, they will migrate once the mite population drops too low.